Hello, friends. I'm off to take my dog Misha to the park. While I'm here, my son Justin's at home preparing for today's video. In the past couple months, he's been feeding me the most delicious tortilla pizzas. So I asked him to show us how to make them. I thought they would be a perfect addition to my channel because not only are they delicious, but they are super budget friendly. They've been a huge TikTok trend. And best of all, you probably already have the ingredients in your kitchen. But before we head back, let me show you this beautiful fruit tree that I spotted while we were there. It was filled with lots of little limes. I always love seeing fruit trees in public spaces. Today, not only will we be making regular pizzas like pepperoni and vegetarian, but we will also be making some gourmet options like barbecue chicken and a white sauce pizza along with a copycat Mexican pizza from Taco Bell. I'll pick up their pizza from the drive-thru on the way back and we'll be recreating it for only a fraction of the cost. At the end, we'll see which pizza is better. For the first pizza, he's making a double layer pepperoni pizza. We have this leftover marinara in the fridge, so he'll be using that along with mozzarella cheese and some pepperoni slices that I picked up at Aldi a while ago. He's choosing to use a pan to fry up his tortilla shells to a nice crispy texture. He'll cook both sides of each tortilla. You can also use a toaster oven or a regular oven and I'll make a pizza using that method later on in the video. This pepperoni tortilla pizza tastes just like a thin crust pepperoni pizza. It is nice and crispy and surprisingly filling. Ingredients cost only $1.32. If you love pepperoni, you definitely have to try this. He made my cheese pizza the same way he made the last one with two layers of tortillas and cheese in the middle. He had some dried Italian seasoning that he topped it with and I topped it with slices of fresh tomato and I had this queso fresco in the fridge so I topped it with a little bit of that and also added some fresh cilantro. Pizza is kind of rich so sometimes I do like having the fresh tomatoes on top. They really help balance everything out. This was delicious and I would eat this any night of the week. This was a little underwhelming. It didn't look like the picture at all. The first layer had a combination of beans and seasoned meat, and the shell seemed to be more like a mixture of corn and flour rather than just flour. We are gonna try to make ours as similar to the real thing as possible, so I'll be dicing a small tomato. I browned my ground beef and added some taco seasoning. I'll be using the Mission Soft Taco Size Flour Tortilla Shells, which are slightly larger than the ones being used by Taco Bell. For this one, I tried making one of the shells in my toaster oven, and it came out crispy, but it didn't brown on both sides the way it does when you make it in the pan. So this is going to take some trial and error for me, but I do like the idea of making it in the toaster oven so that it doesn't have as much oil.
This is the side-by-side -side comparison. Ours looks much better than the original and more like the Taco Bell picture of what it's supposed to look like. I think we had a lot more meat in ours than the Taco Bell pizza, so maybe I shouldn't have added quite as much meat. Also, we fried our shells separately and then combined everything together at the end. I think what they did is they combined the meat, beans, and tortillas and just fried each side. So maybe next time I'll try that. My son was thinking maybe we should have added in some cheese on the bottom layer to hold both tortillas with the meat and the beans together, but they obviously didn't have cheese in the bottom layer of theirs, so we didn't add it. The Taco Bell pizza has been sitting for a while, so I'm sure it was much crispier when I first got it. The Taco Bell pizza had great flavor, but our pizza was definitely better. Ours was heartier and fresher tasting, and I'm not just talking about it being crispy. Our ingredients tasted like they were better quality. My son liked the sauce on the Taco Bell pizza better, and I had to agree. It definitely was better. He said he has a fondness for that sauce that takes him back to childhood memories. So I tried this again later, and this time I layered it like a quesadilla, then fried it in a pan and topped it with some packets of their sauce. This was the all-around winner and came out far superior on all counts to the Taco Bell pizza that we were copying. This is definitely the way I would make it again. The total cost for our pizza was $1.61 compared to the Taco Bell pizza for $4.99. The next pizza we are going to make is based on Domino's Cali Chicken Bacon Ranch Pizza. It has a garlic parmesan white sauce, chicken breast, bacon, tomatoes, and mozzarella. We don't have any bacon so we're just going to be using chicken and my son doesn't like tomatoes so we'll leave those out. We set this under the broiler for a minute or two just to melt that cheese. This turned out so good. It had the perfect amount of cheese to sauce ratio and the texture was spot on with the crispy tortilla edges. We felt it was a little bit rich and needed the addition of one other element. So we added a squirt of the barbecue sauce just to give it a little bit more acidity and it took this pizza from an eight to a 10. It was really delicious. Next, we made a barbecue chicken pizza, which is similar to the last one, but it didn't include the white sauce. We used the barbecue sauce as the base and applied shredded chicken along with some mozzarella and then topped it with cilantro. This is similar to the very popular barbecue chicken pizza at California Pizza Kitchen, with the exception that they use slices of red onion, and we didn't have any. This was awesome. If you've never had barbecue chicken pizza, you should definitely give it a try. Now I'll be making a white pizza with pesto, and I'm using the Bertoli Alfredo sauce again. You've seen me use this before with pasta, and we always have this on hand. I found this pesto in the fridge, so I'm gonna use it, but I normally do prefer the Sam's Club brand of pesto. It's a great deal in this huge 22 ounce container for $7.98. The first thing we need to do is heat up this pesto so that it's easier to put on the pizza. I'll also heat up the Alfredo sauce in the microwave since there's not a lot left. I'll just put the entire jar in there and then I'll pour it on the pizza. I was trying to find an extra squeeze bottle because I thought I could thin this out with a little bit more olive oil and then we could make a really beautiful pizza if I had that squeeze bottle. I could also just maybe make little blobs of the pesto. I've seen pizzas done like that before so I think that, that that's the way I'm going to go with it. But anyway, I've got my Alfredo sauce. It's all... Uh, heat it up and ready to go, so I'll start assembling my pizza. Yeah. 
I'm not sure if it's better to put the pesto under the mozzarella or on top, so I'm going to do it both ways and see which one I like better at the end so I'll know for next time. I think this was my favorite pizza yet. Maybe it's just because it was a new creation, but I really loved it. It was creamy and garlicky, and every now and then, when you bite into the pesto, it gives you that rich basil flavor. I would have loved to add pine nuts to this pizza, but I don't have any in the house, and honestly, I never have pine nuts because they're so expensive. But it was good with the walnuts, so I think next time I make this for myself, I'll definitely add the walnuts into the mix. Next, I'll make two vegetarian pizzas. I'm still using the Trader Joe's marinara that we have left over, but if you remember in one of my recent videos, I made marinara with the tomato sauce, and I think that one of these containers would cover four of the pizzas, and possibly five. For this pizza, I'll be using some mushrooms I had in the fridge, and I'll also be using these banana peppers and a shredded cheese blend of cheddar and mozzarella. I'll also be adding Kalamata olives, which I'm fortunate to have on hand. My youngest son loves these, so I recently picked these up for him. Lucky for me, because I love them on pizza. This was very good and well balanced and honestly at this point I'm just wondering why I never did this before. It has been so much fun just looking through my cupboards, seeing what kind of ingredients I have to put into these pizzas and I especially love that we used a canned meat on the chicken pizzas. I love making these tortilla pizzas because they are so versatile and quick to prepare. You could make low carb pizzas with the low carb tortilla shells and you could easily make these vegan. It's also a great experience for the family. I know my family really enjoy getting together and each one of us making our own favorite pizza version of the tortilla pizza. Some of my viewers have specifically requested that I set up a Patreon account because they would prefer to support me on that platform. I apologize that it took me so long to complete, but I do finally have that set up and ready to go. I have a link to it on my homepage banner, and you can also find me by going to patreon.com backslash ardentmichelle. Thanks so much for watching my video. I hope you liked it. If you plan to make the tortilla pizzas yourself and you take any pictures, please do make sure to tag me so that I can also see them. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.